it trumps everything because you see the amount of disease. So, of course, you know highly likely what's going to happen. But if you do get a scan and a zero, which many of these guys will get a zero, they'll have no heart disease and they, and they will not have in the future, really. Uh, if you put that in the advanced algorithms, that zero score, you come down at 0.9 or 1.9%. That's effectively zero. A 10-year risk for a middle-aged male down at around 1% is essentially zero for all intents and purposes. So it just shows you their own algorithms prove it. And whenever I push that one at the uh, cholesterol defenders online, there's always silence because there's no answer to that, right? So they just go away. Uh, I won't go through this in detail in the interest of speed, but just suffice it to say, Dr. Thomas Dayspring is the guy in cholesterol and heart disease, and he trains doctors all over America and universities. He's a lipidologist. He's basically the ultimate cholesterol expert. And he works with pharma a lot. He takes in a lot of money from pharma, right, for his courses. But he admitted to me in 2014, kind of by mistake, he essentially admitted when I was goading him on Twitter and I was kind of setting him up, and he did admit it. In reality, the majority of heart attacks are due to insulin resistance. And LDL bad cholesterol is a useless predictor for cardiovascular issues unless it's way up over five, right? Which is not really true, but he said it. So again, top expert in the world and a pharma guy. So how important is blood insulin? This study I love, it basically showed that in Colombian men who had a heart attack, they did a great study and said, we're gonna follow them for seven years and we're gonna measure all their bloods at the start and we're gonna get a full profile of all of them and we'll watch and see who gets a second heart attack. And then at the end of seven years, we can look at the data and say, well, what was the thing to watch to know that you're going to have a second heart attack? So it's huge. So what they saw, like in all the studies, I've loads of them I won't show, there was no predictive power of LDL or total cholesterol for a second heart attack. It was just non-significant. There was no risk multiplier. And that, this happens all the time, and you don't hear about it. And high blood pressure, if you had a higher blood pressure at the start, you would double the chance of being one of the guys to have a second heart attack. That makes sense. Blood pressure is, is a problem. But high insulin, how predictive was that of a second heart attack? Nearly seven times more likely if your insulin was high. So any engineer would know, or, or layperson, to be honest. Oh, obviously, you've got to be watching your insulin. Yeah, obviously. And just a quick point, and Dr. David Unwin has done lovely papers on this and others, uh, most high blood pressure in the West, because it doesn't happen in indigenous humans anywhere in the world, their blood pressure never goes up. It just doesn't happen, because they're not insulin resistant. That's it. Uh, insulin resistance causes salt retention in the kidneys and drives up your blood pressure. So I often say to people, if in the morning we only had meat, fish, and eggs, there was no other food. Uh, anti-hypertensive market would be gone in three months and many pharma companies would shut down. If you could only eat meat, fish and eggs, you cannot maintain hypertension. Hypertension that's 50 or 60% of adults over 60, that's just going to fall off the map. You know, these are the bizarre, simple truths.